Hello, Plodin. How are you? Very good, Ivan. Very good to talk to you, to see you again yeah. after all these weeks since you were in Lima. Yeah, and where I find you right now? Where are you now? I am in Lima right now. Oh, you're in Lima. And now you're traveling yes. the world. So I just wondering where are you right now? I know. <laughs> I'm on Skype with Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you and uh, I'm very happy to know you. Um, before to start to talk about um, uh, consciousness and all these contacts, uh, can you share with us um, um, about uh, this uh, UFO symposium in uh, Lima a few days ago. Okay, the UFO forum was not in Lima. Okay. The UFO forum was in Nazca. Okay. Yeah, organized by APU. That's the organization that manages all the people that are involved in the UFO community in Peru that do research, investigation, and so forth. So they uh, organized this Congress together with Anthony Choi, who is an investigative journalist in Peru, who specializes in these subjects, and they did this UFO Forum Congress in Nazca. And um, you was there, can you share something? I mean, some, and probably everything was interesting, but what? It, it is very interesting, especially for one particular reason that interests me. Um, I am working closely with archaeologist Cesar Rio Soriano. Now, um, Cesar Soriano is an iconography archaeologist. So he's a formal, uh, formal scientist of archaeology, but he, his specialty is iconography. That means symbols and signs that are drawn on stones, on rocks, on ceramics. That is his specialty. So in the last couple of months, he has been studying all the iconography of Nazca, but also related to the North. So it's all the symbols that appear throughout the country of Peru in these ancient cultures, but have never really been studied in depth. So the formal archeology, span when you go to a museum or you go into a book where you see these beautiful pictures of ceramics, and the drawings right on the ground of Nazca, all they tell you is about the geography. They tell you about, you know, the place, but they never tell anything about the history because the truth is nobody knows really why those lines were drawn. They don't even really know how old they are, despite that they have done some carbon, carbon, uh, the, the dating of the, of the carbon that says that, these lines are maybe, what, 1,700 years old or so. There's a doubt, really, that they are that, that young because everything points out that these are much, much older. And there is a need to start studying this from another level of awareness. So basically what is new about this is that there is a new approach to astroarchaeology or paleoastronomy, which means the study of the ancient cultures as they knew about the cosmos, their relationship, spiritual, but also their sciences, which were very, very advanced at the time. And we don't understand. I mean, us, uh, as, as, as our civilization, our societies, do not understand. So we need to approach this from a different perspective with a bigger awareness and more conscious. Yeah. Mr. Deniken, Eric von Deniken was in uh, uh, Nazca for many years. And uh, yes. he has something specific about these lines or? Well, he has done a lot of research. He's an honorary member in Nazca because he has been there so many times. Yeah that they, they uh, consider him an honorary member. He has done a lot of research also, but he's, he's a researcher, he's a writer. He's not a formal archeologist. So the difference is that now archeology span is getting involved and that is good because scientists need to get involved yes. so that we can transcend that barrier that we have you know, from, from, from our history. We don't know anything about our origins about our human civilization. We know so little. 
-hmm. And there has been much work done by people like Eric von Däniken and now uh, the very interesting Mauro Bellino in Italy, that he was a formal translator. He's a physiologist and he was a translator for the Vatican for many, many years, translation of the Bible. Uh -huh. And a couple of years ago, he stopped working for these translations because he was doing literal translations of the Bible for the Vatican. Yeah, that's very interesting. What means so special this area for UFO activities? I mean, from ancient times even today. What does it mean uh, for whom, Ivan? Um, I explain your questions a little, a little bit more so that I can give you a better, a better answer. What means so special this land, this area, this part of the world, Nazca, Machu Picchu, this area? What the whole, yes, the, the whole coast, um, the western coast of South America seems to be especially important because we have so many archaeological places and findings. It's everywhere you go in Peru. There is, there's archaeology, there's ancient monuments, there's um, rests of, of, of stone buildings, rock buildings that everybody is puzzled. Nobody knows how old they are, who made them, how they were made because they're so sophisticated in their, in their architecture and construction. So there is something that points in the direction that in the development of our civilization, something started here or happened in this part of the world uh, before the Great Flood. Because after the Great Flood, we, we basically know what the history of mankind is. But if we go back five, six thousand years ago, we have very, very little information. We have stories, we have theories, but we don't have scientific evidence of what happened before that time. And that is what we are now trying to do. So we're going to try to do a breakthrough so that we can uncover scientifically the evidences that we have of our civilizations before that time. Do you think that Atlantis was there I mean, in this area? Um, I don't know how to answer that because it's not something that I think or believe. I tend to be very scientific in that regard, despite the fact that I, that I, you know, I work with spirituality and that I have a very analytical mind. So I am not just con just going to say I think or I believe until I am not really sure that that happened. I would like to tell you maybe yes, maybe there's a connection, but we don't really know. We don't know. And I don't want to say for sure until we have the proof of it. Yeah. And that's, that is different. That's, that's what is happening now. And I think that was the remarkable part of the, of the Congress. So it's not so much anymore about talking what lights we saw in the sky. So it's about talking what happened on Earth. And the focus is starting to shift to humanity. What is our role? Not just the role of the ETs and the extraterrestrials that have always been present in, in, in the process of evolution of humanity, but what is our role now as a humanity that is starting to wake up, become aware, become conscious? So it's, it's starting to look in 180 degrees to us. What did our ancestors leave us? What messages, what knowledge did they have that they have left in their symbols like a library? All these ceramics and lines, it's a library. We had the library in Alexandria that burned down, right? Uh, hundreds of years ago, but we have other ways. We have a library of stone, we have a library of ceramics, we have a library of iconography. Now we need to study and start to decipher. Just like the Sumerian tablets were deciphered, we're going to start deciphering the messages that are in this ancient heritage of culture. That's why we need to protect it. Hmm. Um, something happening in the, in the global, I mean, really something happening with the humanity with everything something is changing something is coming yes what is that yes uh we're we're awakening we're waking up as a collective 
Uh -huh. First, we're waking up as individuals. It's like we're waking up from a dream, and that is contagious because we are, as a consciousness, a collective. So one person starts to wake up, and everybody around that person starts to wake up as well. So we are starting to mature. And before we don't wake up as a humanity and civilization, we're not ready to make collective contact with ET societies and civilizations. Because for them, we are an underdeveloped civilization right now. It doesn't mean that we had previously uh, developed civilizations, but our humanity is a teenager. That's why we're rambunctious and we are, you know, as, a, as individuals, we are precious. But as a collective, we haven't learned yet because we're very, very aggressive as humanity. It's just like a teenager, right? Yeah. yeah. All the hormones That's waking right. up. <laughs> so. Well, it's like. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It, it, it's like, you know, teenagers, we, those of us that maybe have walked a little bit, we are responsible to make sure that we all wake up together. So it's good for us to know that we are not alone and that some of us are in contact with other beings, dimensions, and, and, and entities. But important is that we take responsibility for our own as a humanity, because here is where we belong as humans, right? Yeah. Let's we, we are this collective of a humanity that needs to move forward. We are stuck right now in these old formats of thinking, old values, and we're breaking through to new. And it's, exciting. it's an exciting time. For everybody. Yeah, that wakening looks like a effect of the domino. I mean, one is wake up and then it's. Fun. I love that. I love that, Ivan. That's such a good explanation. It's very good. That is, that's what we are, right? Yeah. How we can uh, wake up our consciousness? Well, we have to start with ourselves. And first of all, we have to understand what are we talking about here? We're talking. You hear the word consciousness a lot lately, but we don't, as a collective, really understand what consciousness is. So if we want to wake up, first of all, we have to open our eyes, right? We have to open our eyes and start looking inside ourselves. I'm talking in a met metaphorical sense, right? To yeah. open the eyes yeah. is to, to start seeing. So we have been trained in the way that our education has trained us to look and measure everything through because we live in a three-dimensional world. So to understand the world outside, we have to measure, we have to weigh, you know, because it's a three-dimensional world. But consciousness is that that experiences the world outside. So we are consciousness experiencing this 3D world and projecting like a picture, like a film on everything that we have, all that is material that is dense, we project the film from within. So we think that we are experiencing the world outside when in reality it's being projected from our consciousness, our feelings, our emotions, our, our, our values. Right? So consciousness is asking us to first look within, to start looking within. Go yeah, ahead. I understand that, but uh, do you have some technique to do that? Well, the first thing that we have to do is be a little bit more silent, right? Okay. But because we're constantly, you know, talking and we're constantly thinking. So what we need to do is look for, for times where we can be more in silence with oneself. So it's not that complicated. It doesn't need that many techniques because, look, meditation is something we were born with. We were born meditating, right? As we developed in the womb of our mothers, we're in meditation. So it's, it's a natural thing for the human to do. All we need to do is to find that space where we can be in silence with ourselves and start to learn who we are. 
and our consciousness will make sure that we find ourselves. Because as you are looking for your consciousness, your consciousness is looking for you. So you can feel the call that says, wake up, wake up, that, Claudine, wake up, Ivan, wake, <laughs> <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake <laughs> up. You can hear it, right? Yeah. It's something that is drawing and pushing us to wake up. Uh -huh. It's from within. It's our heart. It's our consciousness. It's our divine spark that is alive. That's life inside of us, right? And that wants to break through from our blindness and closed heart. So when you do that, so probably uh, we'll be more sensitive, I mean, step by step. Um, sensitive not in a sensorial way, yes? Sensitive not in an emotional way, but sensitive in a compassionate way, that we become more empathetic, empathic towards other beings, humans, animals, nature, people that wake up, start to be more sensitive to the pain of others, to the suffering of others, including nature. Right? So we want to protect. Why is that happening? That we want to protect nature. That we want to protect animals. We don't want anybody to suffer. That is consciousness waking up. Yeah, that makes sense. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and what is the connection between... You said that um, first we have to wake up and to... Uh, something like to build out to uh, to build out consciousness so we'll be ready one day to make these contacts um you mean which contact i mean with ets or okay this is what the ets say in order for you to make contact with us you have to elevate your consciousness okay Yes? Yeah. Because it's like a monkey or a chimpanzee, right? How can you communicate with a chimpanzee? By very primitive way, maybe? Well, that's exactly the way the ETs like have to approach us. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you trying to talk to your cat, to your dog, which are very intelligent, let me tell you. Animals are very intelligent. But how do you communicate the important things to an animal? Oh, maybe, I mean, I know that animals, they can, uh, they can feel our uh, spirits, maybe, I think. They can, they can sense us, they're very perceptive. Yeah. Yeah, they are not intellectual, but they're very intuitive. Yeah. They right. can sense us. Yes. So they have a very developed sense of being. They're conscious beings. So for us to communicate with higher entities, we have to become more perceptive, more sensitive. Okay, yeah. Okay, it's not a technique like go, you go to the gym and you develop your muscle or you learn mathematics or you become more intellectual. You become more human. Okay, I got it. Be more human. Yeah, I got it. What does it mean? What does it mean to be more human? I mean, to be enough sensitive for people around you. I mean, not only for people, but for anything around you. If you have understanding that uh, anything has some uh, conscious and uh, we, we need to have... Um, um, Something yes. like, say in the Bible, um, you have to love your neighbors like you love yourself, kind of like that. Sure, that's why it says, first, we have to love ourselves, right? Now, yeah. here is a very important thing. The thing that works against us is not the external, but our own ego, oh. right? The sense of ego makes us think that we are very special that we are very important, yeah. right? When a person is very grown in their ego, they become arrogant and selfish. 
Now, the ego is very important in the sense that the ego is what keeps us alive in this world because we think we're so important we can't go yet. So it protects us. But the ego works against us if it makes us arrogant and selfish yes, and unsensitive yeah. to other living beings. So what we have to do is seek for times of silence where we can be with ourselves and work with that ego so that we can recognize when we are being selfish, when we are being arrogant, when we're being mean, yes, or not sensitive to other beings. When we are doing that, we know it's the ego, it's not my consciousness that is doing that. So yeah. there's a lot to work. Yeah, that's, a lot to work. That's the technique. Oh. It's to observe ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> when we are in our ego. So it's a different it, gymnastics. It's a gymnastics of self-observation and bringing that down so, so that consciousness can, can seep through and so we can be like light. Because we are perfect as we are, but we have a lot of filters. And the biggest filter is called ego. It doesn't let us see the world and other beings as they really are because we're looking like glasses, right? I take off my glasses. Maybe they're pink or blue and I see the world in pink colors or blue colors. And that's a filter. When I'm upset, I see through a red filter. Yeah. When I'm sad, I see through a blue filter. Yeah, yeah. And it's emotions uh -huh. and thoughts very deep in my subconscious. Yeah. Uh, well, um have you, because we're talking for consciousness, for ancient civilizations, for ETs, have you had ever contact with ET some way? Um, that is a very, that is a very broad question because it's not a yes or no question. Now, if you ask me personally, if I have had experiences, yes, I've had experiences. But I would have to tell you about them also in context. Because if we just see a UFO in the sky and I say, yes, I have seen a UFO, what does that change in me? I mean, it's like I see a tree, I see a UFO. What, what does that mean for you or for me or for anybody to have that experience? Maybe, so, maybe the, the thing that you saw something unusual you never saw before. Right. Yes, that reminds me of our ancient cultures, right? When they first saw the conquistadores, when they appeared on the coast, at first they didn't even see them because they were not accustomed to see boats and ships. And it took a while. The shamans were the first ones that saw on the horizon these ships appearing because the natives, they were not used to looking out to the ocean to see ships arriving. Okay. It's a metaphor, right? Yeah. yeah. So we see what we are prepared to see. Okay. If I'm always looking at the ground, I never see what's happening True. in the sky. Yeah. It's metaphors, it's symbols. Yeah. But it means that what you experience is because you, there's something about that is talking to you and telling you something. So it's not just about what I saw, is what does it mean to me? Yeah. How does it change me? What value does it have in my real life here? Because here, I live here, I still have a body, I, I have responsibilities with my family, with my work, with my students, right? I need to live this life responsibly. Yeah. So how do I integrate that experience into my everyday life to grow in my consciousness? People is exciting when they see something unusual. <laughs> yes, it is exciting because it wakes us up. It makes us see that there's more than, you know, the square that we live in. We live like in a box. What more we have to know about the ETs? So they, are they coming from different dimensions? They're coming from different solar systems? And uh, okay. some of them, Everything, they, have, uh, yes. good, some of them they have a good uh, uh, temple for us. Somebody they're not very... I mean, they can yes. I mean, we can talk, you know, that we can talk about this for hours. Yeah. <laughs> because there's can, a lot to can say. We, can we make it shorter? <laughs> yes. Okay. Extraterrestrial means that it doesn't belong to the Earth. Okay. We're starting like that. Now, that means a lot 
It means physical. It can mean mean dimensional. It can mean many things. So we don't know really about ET. So how can we know if an ET is a physical being or a hologram? How do we know? We can know. Anyway, they are extraterrestrials from whatever dimension they come from. If it is an intelligent being, it is not going to interfere with our free will, because there are all sorts of beings and entities. So we have to learn to differentiate those beings that are helpful, are not going to interfere with our free will, because we are growing up as humanity. We need to make our own decisions about where we want to go with our fate and destiny as a collective. So there are other beings. That maybe are hanging around in different dimensions that are kind of bothering, like like poltergeists and things. They're, those are extraterrestrials as well, but they're hooked into our dimension, and they're kind of making a lot of trouble. So we have to learn to differentiate that. The good ETs are not going to interfere, and they're like our bigger, big brothers. They're not our superiors. They're not our teachers because we have teachers here on Earth. But they are spiritually like an example of where we want to go, and when we are ready as a collective, we will yeah. interact with them. Can you call them angels or? Angels is something different. Is an angel is also an extraterrestrial, because it doesn't live on Earth. Yeah, yeah. It is helping humanity. So when when we're talking about extraterrestrials, are we talking about hum or human humanoid? Beings that come from other planets, so we have to be very specific. What we call an extraterrestrial. So maybe we have to have a knowledge which is a ghost, who is a extraterrestrials. <laughs> yes, we have. But before we can do that, we have to learn who we are. Yeah. What part of me is a ghost? I mean, if.、Uh, <clears throat> We we say that、uh, everything is awakening now. I mean, many different activities in the physical and the spiritual world. And、uh, if we、uh, stand, if we have experience with some of them, we probably we supposed to know what's supposed to be our reaction in that time. <laughs> well, if we are not if we are not practiced. In controlling the fluctuations of our mind and emotions, we're not going to be able to react the right way. So that's why I insist, and, and maybe it sounds like we've talked so many, but it's all connected, Ivan. Because first of all, we need to learn to control ourselves. We need to learn to control our emotions, to control our mind, and to control our ego. Because when we have, then we are we grow up, and then we are ready to make contact. Because we're not going to freak out and scream and run off, right? Like a little child <laughs> under the bed. And most of the time, that is our reaction. <laughs> that is our reaction because we're still teenagers as a humanity, right? <laughs> okay. And the end of this conversation. Do you have some message or something? I mean, basically, <clears throat> that、uh, our conversation will be in the YouTube. So be oh, okay. Okay. In this world, <laughs> okay. But basically,、yes. I'll put subtitles in Bulgarian. So Bulgaria, <laughs> do you have? I mean, some not some ideas, but I don't know how to say that. Yes, I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> It's what you and I are talking. There's something that we're sharing that is very nice. Yeah. There's. It's fun. It's humorous. It doesn't matter what is happening outside of us. We have this, right? Yeah. This connection,、yeah. and this is what tells us: let's have hope. Let's be friends, right? Because we are endless. We are we're light, and we're always going to exist. We're we have this immortality within us. So let's not be afraid. Let's be happy. Let's have humor, and let's grow up. Okay. And the world is going to continue. I t- believe me. Believe me. So be friends with everybody and love everybody. Be friends. Wife, yes. T- tell a joke. Tell a joke once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. Thank you.